Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, we were so far dealing with uh, acoustics, traditional acoustics, which deals with uh, propagation of sound. So today we are going to start uh, talking about interaction between acoustics and combustion. And as opposed to the first half of the class where we dealt with propagation of acoustics, this is a that was a fairly well established subject. Uh, now this sub we are going to speak about a subject where a lot of grey area is there. So things may not be as crisp and clean as what it was in the first half of the class. So in, in general when sound interacts with combustion the effects will be somewhat unfavorable, uh, I mean in, in, in unfavorable to the combustor itself. For example you can have uh, violent oscillations which may cause problems to the structure itself, the structure will start uh, vibrating. And could be subjected to fatigue loading or if the oscillations are very violent like in the case of a rocket motor the uh, there can be catastrophic structural failure. There can be other problems such as uh, increase in heat transfer, so you, you have increase in heat transfer you have uh, which will uh, put uh, strain on the cooling system, you can have increase in mass transfer for example if you are having instability in a solid rocket motor where you are burning some kind of propellant and your, uh, you have a certain burn rate under quiescent conditions but when the oscillations the burn rate can increase and once the burn rate increases the mean pressure changes, thrust changes. So this will change the, uh, uh, this will change the mission profile itself and you can end up uh, with the rocket having to rocket going somewhere else than what you intended. Uh, you can have in gas turbine uh, engines you can have the turbine blades come off, bolts coming off, nuts cracking and so on. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of uh, related structural failures as well as the thermal failures. There is yet another failure which is uh, if you are talking about a aerospace kind of stuff like a rocket, uh, the uh, electronics which is involved in the satellite is quite sensitive. Uh, it, if, if there is loud amplitude oscillations the electronics will fail. So, uh, and then the control goes off. So, your satellite can be spoiled or alternately uh, even small level of vibrations can affect the uh, guidance and navigation systems and, and, and so on. So, all of this can uh, cause uh, different failures of different level and different kind, but some of the failures can be quite catastrophic. Even in a terrestrial burners like gas turbine, like I said you can have uh, the burn, uh, burners. Uh, crack with uh, fatigue and so on as well as injectors breaking apart and, and, and so on. So uh, it can happen even in uh, furnaces uh, and so on. So in general the effects are undesirable although there is a class of, uh, um, so let me write this down. So usually undesirable effects. But there is a class of combustors called pulse combustors. So there we deliberately make the combustor pulse, make sound and then use the sound for uh, achieving uh, certain phenomena. Um, <coughs> one example, very famous example is the V1 bomber which was a pulse combustor which was used like a jet engine and the other examples include uh, the pulse combustors that are used for home heating and, and uh, uh, drying um, slurries and so on for example in cement industry or drying milk to get milk powder and so on. So the you have loud oscillations and you try to use the oscillations to uh, increase the heat and mass transfer and heat mass and moment and tran uh, transport in these processes uh, which are energy intensive. So you can increase the productivity or consume less energy and, 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 and so on. So, uh, uh, so it is true that while in general it is true that we do not want the oscillations that they are undesirable. There are some cases as in the case of pulse combustors where you actually uh, 
try to set them up and try to use them for beneficial uh, uh, beneficial purposes. For example, your incinerators, and there you have pulse combustors so that uh, your incineration can be faster and so on. Uh, so there are two types of sound that comes from combustion process. So one would be combustion noise and the other one will be called combustion driven oscillations. This combustion noise is also called sometimes called combustion roar because it makes kind of roaring kind of sound. So this would be uh, a broadband spectrum um, that means you do not have a sharp tone whereas instability would be sharp tone. Uh, uh, the uh, combustion noise basically comes from the turbulent fluctuations and uh, uh, so this, uh, this is really not in uh, 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 giving rise to feedback between combustion and acoustic but just the that the combustion the flame generates noise and one reason why people are very interested is that the sound is a fingerprint of the turbulence in the flame. So you can actually uh, measure the noise and try to quantify the uh, turbulent oscillations in the combustor. But uh, when we talk about uh, thermoacoustic oscillations, we are talking about a uh, about a feedback, and the feedback leads to very large amplitude oscillations. So you have a acoustic field, which is uh, and 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 a flame or a heat release rate, which is actually uh, feeding back into each other. So uh, sound is produced by the combustor. Uh, the flame or the combustion and the sound actually travels to the uh, end of the burners and often gets reflected very well and comes back and affects the flame. The flame produces, uh, flame is unsteady and the sound makes the flame further unsteady. Now the flame produces more sound, goes, comes back, again uh, influences the flame. So this kind of feedback results in the amplitudes growing and um, uh, to large values. So this is what is combustion instability as opposed to combustion noise where there will be no feedback. The uh, heat release uh, generates acoustics, but this uh, feedback is cut off. That would be combustion noise. So uh, when I speak about uh, spectra, so the uh, uh, this is how the spectra would look like when you have combustion-driven oscillations, and the uh, the there will be well-defined frequencies. It, it will be like sound of a flute or something, whether like nice tone or, or whistling, as opposed to uh, the uh, um, uh, combustion noise which is like a roar, it has all frequencies, it, it does not really have any specific tone or anything like that. Okay. <coughs> so this is the first thing of, of um, uh, main difference between these two and the second thing is that when you have combustion roar, although it is irritating and polluting the environment with combustion noise and all that, the noise level, the amplitude level, so the sound is not uh, that high compared to what you get when you have combustion driven oscillations. When you have combustion driven oscillations, the pressure amplitudes will be very high. So this will be very high pressure amplitude. This would be relatively low amplitudes. So we are going to focus in the semester on studying this combustion driven oscillations which are called uh, thermoacoustic oscillations. Or we can view this as a stability problem so we can call it thermoacoustic instability or they are also called combustion instability. Uh, 
some people also call it combustion dynamics. because instability sounds kind of bad. So, this is more like a fancy name. Uh, <clears throat> now, we are always trying to have euphemisms for a uh, bad thing. You do not call somebody dumb, you say that their intelligence is challenged or something. So, it is the same way. You, uh, you do not call somebody short, you say they are vertically challenged. So, similarly, we say a combustion dynamics instead of calling combustion instability just so that it sounds very good. Shareholders will like it. <coughs> Uh, combustion is really a volume source of sound. I will go into the mathematical aspects of this later on. Uh, this will give rise to fluctuating uh, densities and then that will interact to produce fluctuating pressure and fluctuating um, <coughs> velocities and so on. And so, it is the heat release fluctuations which actually drive the oscillations in the duct and drive the acoustic field and heat release oscillations themselves depend on acoustic field. That is the whole idea about the uh, feedback. So, we can think of the flame as being located in a resonator and uh, the flame is adding energy to the resonator. Of course, there will be some loss of energy from the resonator through the walls or vibrations and so on. So, once you have <coughs> enough energy being created and if the <coughs> energy created, the acoustic energy which is added to resonator is more than the acoustic energy that is lost, then your oscillations will grow. And when if they eventually balance then you can say that the oscillation will stay at some steady level which would possibly lead to uh, formation of uh, limit cycles. Now, uh, we can study these things in the context of uh, dynamical systems theory and I will attempt to do that after some days, but initially uh, we will take a classical view of things which is more like acoustic view of things before going into the modern dynamical systems view of things. I know that many of you are doing physics minor and so on. So, I think you will, uh, it will appeal to you to do uh, dynamical systems way of doing things. So, first uh, I want to uh, give some introduction about certain terms. Uh, so, we can um, in general think of two kinds of instability. So, let us say we look at some parameter, this uh, parameter on the x axis can be equivalence ratio or, or mass flow rate or, or heat release rate, mean heat release rate or in any such uh, parameter um, thermal loading <coughs> and the y axis can be some measure. Measure would means something which quantify. So, pressure amplitude or velocity amplitude, pressure amplitude will be a easy thing to measure <coughs> and that can be uh, used as a measure. So, if you change the uh, this parameter, let us say uh, mean heat release rate or something like that, thermal loading uh, or equivalence ratio. If you increase it slowly, uh, in this region where my mouse is, the combustor is staying as, uh, I mean at the, at the moment there are no oscillations, you are at 0 amplitude and you come at some point where the oscillations get onset and the oscillations keep growing in amplitude and it is actually coming on very smoothly. Okay. Now, uh, as a, so th this would be uh, one type of oscillations and another type of oscillations would be you have a uh, you, you keep increasing your uh, parameter, you come to some place and when the oscillation became unsteady and then it went up. And before this region, you have some kind of threshold. So, below this if you excite, let us say you have some kind of uh, initial conditions, uh, you have some kind of noise or, or, or some initial disturbance. If the initial disturbance is below some threshold, it comes back to this quiet state. But if you disturb it above this, you actually go to a higher state and there can be a, like a limit cycle or some other state on the top. So, so you have a stable and unstable here. So, this would be uh, a supercritical bifurcation as per nonlinear dynamics. I will give an introduction to nonlinear dynamics and explain what is bifurcation and what is the kind of thing that you see here. Th this is uh, actually, uh, those of you know the subject, this would be Hopf bifurcation. Uh, so, uh, the uh, this one where you if you are below this threshold you are stable above it is unstable and beyond some parameter it is unstable. So, that will be called uh, subcritical bifurcation which is also in thermoacoustics or combustion instability language it is called triggering instability. So, uh, in when you are subcritical or supercritical uh, there is a clear difference. So, when you have supercritical oscillations the sound comes on slowly and steadily and keeps keeps on increasing and here 
this uh, uh, this is the region where you have linear instability as well as nonlinear instability. So, if you have a small disturbance, it will become unstable. Even if you have large disturbance, you will get to the same instability. Whereas here, with a large disturbance, you can get instability right here itself. But to the right of this, even a small disturbance can make you unstable. So, there are different regions of linear stability and non-linear stability. So, this kind of difference is there. We will uh, we will speak about uh, this in the language of the dynamical systems theory uh, later on in, in more detail, but I just wanted to say that there are these two types of instabilities. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, you should have this in like a conversation. So, uh, uh, this is uh, actually notes from my thesis advisor, Professor Zinn, he was kind enough to let me use it. So, uh, traditionally we call it there is a linear instability and non-linear instability. So, system is considered linearly stable when any small amplitude disturbance will amplify with time and the system will be uh, uh, sorry I said wrong a system is linearly stable if any small amplitude disturbance will decay with time and the system is linearly unstable if any disturbance will amplify with time. Okay. You have very small disturbance it can be infinitesimally small infinitesimally small means you can make it smaller and smaller, but it is above 0, but you can uh, of course, you can mathematically write saying that you can define epsilon and epsilon can be going like 1 over n and you can pick a n large enough and infinitesimally small means you can pick a n even larger than what you have and then you can prove lots of theorems about what is infinitesimally small and so on. But I hope you have an intuitive understanding of what is infinitesimally small. It means there is some disturbance which is non-zero, but it can be as small as you want to pick. If you want to put 10 power minus 20 fine 10 power minus 100 that is fine 10 power minus 100,000 or 10 power minus billion or whatever there is no problem. So, that is arbitrarily small or infinitesimally small. You can start from an arbitrarily small disturbance, but the oscillations will come on spontaneously uh, and eventually uh, of course, it is unlikely that the oscillations will keep on growing forever, uh, because eventually nonlinear processes as the amplitude keeps growing the nonlinear processes will become important and then this unbounded growth uh, may not happen. It is like economy it can grow forever I do not know after some time you will stop getting uh, uh, I mean nonlinearities will come into account. So, if you are having an E grade and if you study harder you can get a D if you study even harder you can get a C even harder you can get a B, but to get a S maybe uh, it won't it this it may not be uh, very linear and there is no grade beyond S. So, that is that is it. So, it is not like if you studied 10 times what you studied to get a A you will get a some S double plus because such a thing exists does not exist. So, eventually the oscillations can saturate off in because of the very definition of non-linear definition of grades. Uh, so, it is the same way here the oscillations can uh, um, uh, uh, can uh, taper off to a limit cycle oscillations. So, we think of what uh, pressure you can have mean pressure just like we defined in the case of acoustics and you can have a mean plus a fluctuation and we can plot the fluctuation and see the flu how the fluctuations go and the fluctuations will go like e power alpha t that is the hypothesis and we will see whether it will actually grow like that or decay like that. And in general uh, we will excite modes which are close to the uh, natural modes of the duct and this growth rate will depend depend on the gain minus losses. So, the flame puts in some energy into the resonator there is always losses and whatever is the difference that is what is uh, driving the sound. Now, uh, uh, I must say that the uh, triggering instability was seen in rockets in 50s and 60s and, and so on when there was this uh, cold war brewing between America and Russia and lot of work was done. Uh, and uh, of course, you probably know that the dynamical systems theory kind of that subject became hot in 1970s and probably in 80s the theory was kind of well established and so on, but this combustion instability was there even before that and people were studying it. Uh, so, in those days they did not have terms like subcritical half bifurcation and so on. So, the term was that uh, triggering instability okay, that was what they call. So, a, a system is nonlinearly unstable if some finite amplitude grows with time. So, the key word is some finite amplitude it does not have to be every amplitude certain particular amplitude disturbances grow with time and it is enough that some of them grow not all need to grow and the other key word is the finite amplitude. So, we are not talking about 
infinitesimally small amplitude, but finite amplitude. That means, you cannot keep on saying I want 10 power minus 20, 10 power minus 100. It can be small or big, but it, it is not arbitrarily small, it is finite amplitude. And uh, for triggering instability, the initial amplitude should be greater than that of a threshold amplitude. So, this is the way people viewed uh, the subcritical Hopf bifurcation in those days in, 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 in this language. Are there any questions on any of this? No. So, there are uh, different ways in which you can have uh, heat release oscillations and I will give some examples. So, a very simple example is a premixed flame. So, you can uh, take a Bunsen burner and you can uh, actually keep a Bunsen burner near a woofer and you will actually see the flame moving back and forth. You can try this experiment, it is not dangerous or anything. You can also take a candle and put it in front of a woofer and you will see it uh, of dancing. It is a very simple experiment, not dangerous at all, you can do it at home. And uh, so, this is a steady, uh, uh, steady flame. And this is actually uh, you are exciting it with some kind of oscillation. This is a snapshot. It's a Schlieren picture. So it's uh, premixed flame will actually uh, dance with music. Sorry. Ah, okay. Yeah, so if you actually put uh, a tube around a premixed uh, flame, uh, you can see the. This is a, these are uh, high speed images which are okay because the lights you can't see it, but uh, I, I guess you can see. It, right? So, you can see the uh, uh, flame oscillating back and forth and uh, so what we there is no loudspeaker here I am actually putting there is a Bunsen kind of flame uh, and I put a tube around it and then self excited oscillations are coming and the uh, heat release fluctuation is coming from the area fluctuations. So, in a pre mixed flame the amount of fuel that is burnt depends critically on the flame area whatever crosses the flame area will burn. So, if, you have, if the flame has more area, more fuel is going to cross. Just to give an example, if you have flame this way, you are having fuel air mixture coming out and whatever is coming out will burn. Now, if the same flame, if it was stretched to this, you have more area through which fuel air mixture can come out. So, more more heat release will be there because more more fuel air more, more of the mixture is burning. So, similarly if you actually have a flame this way and uh, the color chart. and if I am wrinkling it. So, there is uh, more stuff can come out. So, in, in general uh, the uh, flame area surface area is uh, I mean the heat is proportional to flame surface area. So, you have more surface area you will have you will be burning more premixed uh, uh, fuel air mixture if you have less surface area you will be burning less mixture. So, therefore, as the surface area oscillates the heat release rate will oscillate and this will gi give rise to a driving in the uh, driving to the acoustic field. So, uh, that is what I have uh, written in this uh, formula here. Uh, so, in general uh, you can I mean there could be other effects, but you can uh, say that uh, under certain assumptions heat release rate fluctuation will be proportional to the area fluctuate area fluctuation. So, heat release rate is definitely correlated to surface area and the oscillations will make the flame wrinkle and the wrinkling leads to the oscillatory heat release. The oscillatory heat release drives the sound and the sound in turn comes back and wrinkles the flame. So, this is like a feedback process. So, this is one way in which you can have oscillations in premixed flames. Okay. Is that clear? Everybody is sleeping here. No emotions today. Okay, so let's uh, think about. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about a few different mechanisms before we start writing equations. You can have uh, uh, lean premix pre-vaporized burners. So these were the burners which were going to solve all the problems related to nitric acid rain, which was a big hot topic in the 1980s all the liberals said that the world was going to be destroyed with nitric acid rain 
and you have to uh, you have to um, stop the nitric acid rain and the <coughs> combustion engineers came up with this uh, strategy to reduce NOx that is lean premix pre vaporized uh, burners uh, where they said that we will burn very close to the lean limit uh, that way you have temperatures is very low and when temperatures are low NOx production will be low that is the idea. So, we are uh, trying to push it and trying to burn it clean and now what happened when these burners came and they are brought to site I think they, uh, they started uh, developing very severe oscillations to the point that like I said blades came turbine blades broke loose and, and bolts and nuts came out and air inlet pipes cracked and, and so on. So, <coughs> there was quite uh, serious problems related to this, uh, but this is uh, not quite uh, difficult to understand except that we do not expect it. For example, I will give a, a very simple example, uh, I think maybe I already gave this, uh, let us say my grades are going down and I get scolded by my dad or mom and I decided to study. I try to study very aggressively and grades are now going up, but now my girlfriend is upset with me and now uh, uh, because she is trying to leave because she says you are studying all the time, uh, I, I have nothing to do with you. And then you try to pacify the girlfriend and then uh, you grades come down again and, and, and depending on you will reach some kind of uh, some level of oscillations and your grades also will reach some level of oscillations and so on. So, this is kind of a linear instability. But then uh, let us say you can also have this um, uh, more catastrophic uh, problem for example, this thing goes on and your girlfriend got upset the day before the end semester and she threatened to walk out or she already walked out or, or on the verge of walking out and then you got so upset that uh, uh, you failed in the end semester examination and then you got so depressed that your end semester in acoustics went bad and then all the other slots also went bad that is one possibility. Another possibility is. Uh, uh, you stayed up all night uh, crying about your grades or girlfriend one of these things and whatever it is depending on the local uh, conditions and then you or boyfriend whatever uh, 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 and uh, this can happen to girls and boys. And then you stayed up all night and then could not get up in the morning and then um, the attendance went down and so this is like a new effect now coming into the picture and the attendance went down and then now you are stopped from writing the exam and then you get into a new set of problems. So, instabilities can happen in life also and uh, it is generally because of coupling between things. We if, if grades were separate, girlfriend was separate, there was no problem or boyfriend was separate, but generally life in life everything is uh, uh, coupled with each other and then you uh, just like this heat release and acoustics. If they were in separate places, there is no instability problems. You can have heat release in one place, acoustic field another place. No, the heat release happened in the burner, the acoustic field also is there in the burner. At same way in your life, you have grades, dean, girlfriend, everything together and your mom and dad and they are all interfering with you and uh, then you have this instability set in. Now, sometimes instability may not set in. So, as the uh, as I mentioned during when I talked about the bifurcation diagram that when the thermal loading goes up, instabilities uh, keep increasing. So, in life also when things are cool during vacation if girlfriend threatens to walk out or you are not studying, there is no really a problem, but as you come closer to the stability margin which is the day before the end semester or mid semester whatever and, and then the uh, onset of instabilities can happen very easily, whereas in some other play times there is no problem, but the same episode will die down any disturbance may die down and then there are some if it is quiz for example, it may be like a triggering instability. If the disturbance is above some threshold then you can mess up the quiz, but below you can deal with it. But in the same uh, for the end semester it may be that any disturbance can mess you up or something. So, I mean I it is a very loose hand waving example, but I understood instability thinking about my life and how it can get messed up with uh, coupling with a uh, lot of things and, and uh, this is the same way with combustors. So, and generally this you, you do not design uh, your life for instability, you design your life for performance or you say I want to have the best grades, I want to get the best job, I want to study PhD with the best professor, I want the best girl or best boy as my girlfriend and boyfriend. So, you design for performance, you do not design for stability, but then when you uh, um, instability just hits you. I give one more example which is really can be modeled this way, uh, I do not know any of you who are athletes what do you do? Weight lifting. Weight lifting. Uh, run and uh, run. Okay. Uh, uh, so, running and? 
Playing, playing games. So let's say you want to do very well and you are really working hard, 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 hard. And you are really running in the morning, evening, doing weights and, and, and all kinds of cross training, everything. And very likely, before the day of the event, you can get injured if you are really training too hard. Because the training uh, 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 actually pushes your muscles and you have to push them very hard so that they crack and rebuild and so on. But they may crack beyond the level of rebuilding and you get, and it's very common, you speak to athletes and they will say that many times I got injured just before the event. So they always say that uh, you, uh, you shouldn't peak before too early and you have to build up such that just before the event you, uh, you, because the difference between peak performance and injury is a very fine line. I guess you accept that, right? I mean, if you go and lift something beyond you can, you can probably do it one time and that's probably the day of the event and after that you probably cannot, uh, even that is quite risky. Uh, now, let's give an example of instability in modern management. The modern management says, if you, um, if you want to get something done, ask a busy person to do. So, the earlier management was that, if somebody had less work, you ask him to do. And there's some, some other guy, let's say Anviksha is working very hard, I won't ask her to do anything, this fellow is not having, he is having less work, so I will make him do. But now all of this has been thrown away and the modern management gurus with this tie and MB and all that, they are coming and saying that uh, this is all old wisdom. If you want something to be done, ask a busy guy to do. So busy guy, uh, and she is working hard, I give her more work, she does even more. And give her even more work, she does even more. And then what happens? She is a peak performer given award and all that and so on. And on fine day, stroke. I don't mean that you <laughs> get this. <laughs> uh, well, that is on, just one of the options. I, had, uh, I have several of my classmates who are very extremely successful in their lives. They have, I mean, uh, all kinds of medals, decorations, like they are, um, uh, uh, they're having their own companies, they're having books written, all kinds of, uh, anything you name it, and, and, and so on. So one had a stroke, and, and recently, actually he came to see me one day here in July, and he came to my room, and on the way, he said, uh, I'm, I got out, I'm coming in IIT bus, um, something is happening to me, come and help me. And he had a stroke actually. And he was very, my classmate, just neighboring room fellow. And he doesn't um, drink or um, smoke or anything of that sort, but he's working very hard. So that's what it is. So if you push very hard and very hard and very hard, you can either get a stroke or you can get, um, um, you can go crazy, right? I mean, uh, you, you, you can get um, depressed and you can, uh, or you can, a lot of things can happen. You can get heart attack. So there's a menu of, asymptotic states which you can raise. Uh, so, uh, uh, but that's the thing. So, we always, we are more greedy and we want more performance. And our engines are designed for incredible performance. Okay, I, I think you have to uh, uh, phrase that uh, correctly. Our rockets are designed for and I must underline this word double underline the word incredible performance. So, we have machines which can perform incredibly well. Just like I said, the human beings who can perform incredibly well with their work. But uh, there is a fine line and as you push the things, instability will come. Even in the engines, if you are, uh, if you speak to people who are developing gas turbine or anything, when the initial testing, these things do not come up because they are not really pushing the uh, engine to its limits. But as you push and push and push, you get, uh, you, you get the instability. So, instability is a fine line. Uh, it's just like uh, injury is a fine line between performance and, uh, I mean, the, sorry, there's a fine line between performance, peak performance and injury. Just like instability happens when you uh, are pushing the power of the machine. Uh, so, <coughs> what happens in this case? This, uh, all the uh, left, left wing liberals wanted the nitric acid rain to be stopped. You come up with this uh, burners which are supposed to drop. Uh, uh, they are burning lean and once you burn lean, you have low NOx. There is no problem with any of that, but something unintended happened. So, uh, you have this fuel being coming into this uh, line and you have uh, air coming in. So, let us say there are some small fluctuations, small amplitude fluctuations which you think are inconsequential. They come and travel to the burner, uh, uh, travel to the fuel line. And what happens? So, when let us say the pressure is coming down, when a pressure oscillation comes, pressure can come down and pressure can go up, both can happen. When in the oscillation pr pressure is coming down, what happens to delta P? You, you are, uh, line is at a certain delta P and now we are decreasing the exit pressure little further. 
So the delta P increases. When the delta P increases, what happens? Mass flow rate increases. Now let's say we are on climbing up the oscillations. We are at a high amplitude oscillation. We are at the peak of the oscillation. So now uh, the uh, reservoir pressure is at certain value, and the exit pressure has come up. So the delta P has decreased. So your delta P is oscillating. So the mass flux or the volume flux is oscillating. <coughs> so your fuel flow rate is oscillating. So similarly, there are uh, oscillations which are traveling to the air line. So when the uh, velocity fluctuations are towards the uh, towards the right, then the air flow rate is increasing. When the velocity fluctuations are to the left, air flow rate is decreasing. So both the fuel flow rate is modulating and the air flow rate, air flow rate is modulating. So the equivalence ratio itself is modulating. So as a consequence, the heat release rate will oscillate and, and when the heat release rate oscillates, you again drive the acoustic field, the acoustic field now gets stronger, the acoustic field now sends back stronger waves here, delta P increases even, uh, uh, even further. So you have more fluctuations and more fluctuations lead to even more heat release, even more heat release lead to even more strong acoustic field till these things level off at some limit cycle or something like that. So I hope this mechanism is uh, clear. Any questions? On this? <coughs> so there are <coughs> other uh, mechanisms with which you can oscillate also. You have uh, a hydrodynamic instability which is a vortex shading which is what is there in kind of uh, backward facing step combustors or what is called dumb combustors and uh, so the fuel, so the vortices are shed. Now you may ask why have a backward facing step or why have a bluff body in a combustor to begin with. So we want to hold the flame at higher speeds which are much higher than the flame velocity. So the flame velocity is of the order of uh, laminar velocities of the order of sub meter per second and so turbulent burning velocity will be like meters per second. But we want 100 meter per second flow in the combustor or 50 meter per second flow in the combustor. So we are greedy. So, <coughs> so then the flame will be blown out. So stop, stop the bur uh, flame from burning out. We have to have some kind of uh, region where you hold the hot radicals or the uh, uh, you need the hot radicals. So, so that the heat can ignite, heat and, and the hot radicals they can act as a ignition source and then keep the uh, uh, fresh fuel air mixture that is coming burn. But the problem is these bluff bodies which hold the flame, they actually shed vortices and so there is a hydrodynamic fluctuation scale and there is of course the acoustic fluctuation scale and these two can uh, uh, come in close contact, the scales can match and you can have instability. So the fuel air mixture comes in this packet which is brought by the vortices comes and burns then again the next packet comes and burns, another packet comes and burns. So you have some kind of periodic uh, uh, periodic burning, again periodic burning <coughs> leads to fluctuating heat release which in turn can drive the uh, oscillations. Uh, now you can also have swirl stabilized flames like in a gas turbine. So the swirl uh, is another way of holding flame. So swirl has a recirculation zone in the middle because the vortex breakdown, but the recirculation zone actually precesses, it has an instability and it will precess. And because of this, there is some kind of natural oscillation that can come up. In afterburners, you hold the flame with some kind of V gutter and so that behaves in a similar way. It also shed vortices and so on and you can have instabilities. Now there is yet another mechanism with which instabilities can happen. You can have droplets that are, when you have liquid rocket engines or, or liquid fuel combustors, you have atomization of the liquid fuel to droplets. Why do you atomize uh, liquid fuel? Sorry? Ah, to increase surface area. Why do you want to increase the surface area? Yeah, the uh, fuel has to first, the fuel has to first vaporize and then react. So you want to have maximum surface area. So when you have, <coughs> so you have droplets and the droplets, first of all the atomization process itself can start oscillating when there are perturbations in the chamber, okay. So you can, <coughs> uh, your droplet diameters that, the diameter distribution that comes out of the atomizer can oscillate. Now individually <coughs> each of the droplet can actually move with the sound, it can start fluctuating, it can actually dance with the sound 
uh, and the evaporation rate of each droplet can actually fluctuate with the oscillations plus the spray itself can fluctuate. In addition this can actually in interact with the vortices and this uh, the droplets can uh, go along with the vortices as the vortices roll up and so on and <coughs> also the droplets can cluster and uh, decluster with the acoustic field. So, a lot of complications that can happen, but all of it can lead to unsteady heat release. So, uh, there is a, a lot of this mechanism that can lead to unsteady heat release rate. So, uh, so this actually leads to uh, the uh, setting up of uh, thermoacoustic oscillations or instability. So, in each of these cases depending on the combustor and the mechanisms involved uh, you will have locally a different mechanism, but the unifying thing in all these uh, cases is you have unsteady heat release rate driving the acoustic field and the acoustic field feedbacks into the heat release rate. So, uh, the actual way in which the heat release rate is modulated I, I give you several different examples you can have premixed flame having wrinkles, you can have a vortex combustion where you have periodic vortices, we can have equivalence ratio fluctuations modulation of the fuel and air flow rate and if you are having a diffusion flame uh, the mixing in the flame uh, in, in diffusion flame it is a mixing which controls the uh, reaction uh, uh, the, the heat release rate. So, when the oscillations the mixing between fuel and air streams can, can, can be affected seriously and therefore, this can lead to uh, 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 dip, uh, the flame uh, being oscillatory and the heat release being oscillatory. So, you can have uh, uh, several different mechanisms in which you can have the uh, heat release rate being affected, but the unifying thread is that there is oscillatory heat, re heat release rate which drives the acoustic field and the acoustic field dry in turn drives the oscillatory heat release rate. So, I hope this is clear. Last thing I want to talk about today is combustion adds energy to the acoustic field if it is in phase with the pressure fluctuations and this was uh, given by Lord Rayleigh. Uh, it is there in his uh, famous textbook theory of sound and it is also there in his uh, papers in uh, nature and so on. So, it is quite old this criteria it is called uh, now called Rayleigh criteria. Combustion adds energy to the acoustic field if it is in phase with the pressure pressure fluctuation the heat release rate should be in phase with the pressure fluctuations. So, let us uh, look at uh, a very hand waving example. So, let us think about uh, you follow my mouse. So, there is an oscillation and let us say I added heat which resulted in a temperature rise <coughs> and a pressure rise <coughs> and so on when the heat release uh, uh, when the when the wave reached its maxima. So, I add heat here and then the amplitude of the wave increases and then it comes here and I again add heat. So, it will increase further. So, there is kind of a growth. Now, uh, let us on the other hand say that I added heat when the uh, when the pressure reaches the minima. So, what happens the amplitude comes comes down because you are trying to go down, but you are trying to add heat. So, the pressure will go up. So, the amplitude will actually come down and then again you come to the next minima and you add heat here. So, the amplitude will further come down. So, this way it keeps on dying down. So, the uh, uh, the timing of the heat release rate or the phase of the heat release rate with respect to the pressure is quite important. In the first case I <coughs> added heat in phase with the pressure and uh, the oscillations kept increasing. In the second case I added heat release rate in, in out of phase with the pressure and kept decreasing. Now, you can also have examples where I can cool here if I can remove heat when it reaches the maxima it will damp and if I can uh, uh, add heat sorry yeah if, if, if here if I remove heat when I reach the minima it can actually increase. So, I have to add heat when your pressure is pressure amplitude is high if I, if I uh, that will drive if I take out heat when the pressure amplitude is low that will also drive, but if I add heat when the pressure amplitude is low then I will damp the oscillation. So, it is like a swing if you are swinging you have to push the swing if somebody is swinging and trying to push the swing you have to push it at the appropriate time at the wrong time if you push you can stop the swing. So, this is something like that. Now, how does this relate to our acoustic energy corollary which we derived and made a big deal out of in the earlier classes. 
So, in that acoustic energy corollary we derived the right hand side was 0 if you remember. So, now this is the final result we will derive it in the next class. So, if the right hand side is 0 it says that the net acoustic energy will grow or decay if sound comes in or sound goes out right. If more sound is coming in from outside then the energy will grow more sound is going out it will decay. But now what it says is the acoustic energy can grow if there is a correlation between pressure and heat release fluctuations. So, if acoustic pressure is in correlation with the heat release fluctuations then this integral will be positive. If it is not in correlation that is if it is if it is in phase the pressure will this term will be positive if it is out of phase term will be negative. So, if it is positive you have a let, let us say heat is uh, in heat release rate fluctuations are in phase with the pressure fluctuations this term will be positive and so this this term represents the energy that is coming in or going out of the surface. In general you have losses. So, this term on the right let us say you move this term to the right. So, this P Q term minus this term that is the net, net gain minus losses because this is this represents the amount of acoustic energy added this represents the amount of acoustic energy which is lost. So, uh, heat gain I mean the energy gain minus energy lost equal to the rate of energy change of energy at the control volume. So, this is a quantitative way of expressing relic criteria we will derive that in the coming classes. So, uh, to summarize so I uh, before that I have a question I want you to think at home what if you add heat like here a quarter period after the maxima or like quarter period before the maxima. Now, I am talking about huh? um, are you sure nothing will happen? Nothing will happen to the amplitude, but will anything else can happen? The time will be hmm? Yeah, phase will change. So, hmm? frequency will change. Can you try to work out which way um, uh, we can discuss at the beginning of the next class? Uh, if let us consider a case where you have. So, let us add heat here and add heat here see what is the effect on the frequencies your frequency will change. So, just think about it at home and uh, we can discuss it first thing tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, in, in summary we uh, said that oscillations are in general not good for the uh, uh, not good for the hardware except in the case of pulse combustor where you deliberately want the oscillations. You can actually have structural failure you can have component melting or damage due to excessive heat transfer. Uh, you can have change in the burn rate uh, which leads to different uh, thrust. You can have uh, interference with the control system operations or with the electronics or destroy the satellite. So, there are a lot of ways you can have damage to the oscillation and you want to control the instability. So, we talked about linear instability and nonlinear instability. We uh, spoke very briefly about supercritical uh, bifurcation and subcritical bifurcation. I promise to speak a lot more on it later. We uh, took a brief look at different types of mechanisms that can create fluctuating heat release and different ways heat release state can have feedback from the acoustic field and then we spoke about the condition the relay criteria where which says that heat release should be in phase with the pressure for the acoustic energy to grow and if it is out of phase the acoustic energy will decay. Of course, in general it is the acoustic energy will grow depending on gain minus losses. So, in actual system there will be losses. So, there is some energy added with the p prime q prime term, but there is some energy lost. So, the difference if it is positive you will add energy to the system. So, I will stop here.